The Hoosiers star running back returned against Michigan State, but it wasn't enough to get the Hoosiers back on the winning side just yet. We have the highlights off the top. Plus, Hoosiers fans getting their first look at the basketball team in Hoosier hysteria this weekend. All that and more coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome to Hoosier Sports Tonight. I'm Jacques Rozier alongside Sam Lieberman. Indiana falling at Michigan State 52-26, but it was a lot closer than that score indicates. That's true. I mean, the Hoosiers were hanging in the ball game up until the fourth quarter, but again, like they've done the entire season, did struggle in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at the highlights. IU traveling to East Lansing for another Big Ten matchup, taking on the number four ranked Michigan State Spartans. Hoosiers looking to bounce back after a rough collapse to Rutgers last weekend. How about Jordan Howard, the nation's leading rusher going into the Week 5 Ohio State game before he got injured, but he's back and making his presence felt early on with his five-yard touchdown run. Hoosiers take the early lead, but that would not last long. Late in the second quarter, Connor Cook out of the gun, he pump fakes and hits Aaron Burbridge on the double move. That's Cook's second touchdown of the day, and Michigan State thinks they're going to take that eight-point lead into the half but with one minute and seven seconds left in the second quarter, Nate Sudfeld driving down, he wants to go deep, drops back and finds Simi Cobbs Jr. on the go route. Cobbs had over 100 yards in the day, but a gorgeous ball by Sudfeld. He's showing scouts that he deserves that in invite to Indy for next year's combine. Moving on to the second half, third and goal from the 13, and it's Connor Cook threading the needle yet again. This time finding the tight end Josiah Price for the 13 yard strike. Spartans back up by eight. Ensuing possession from the three, Sudfield gets it out to Andre Booker on the quick screen, breaks a couple tackles, and he's into the end zone. That's his first career touchdown. Iowa's kicker Griffin Oaks missed two extra points early on, has a chance here to take the lead from 42 yards out, and he pushes it wide right. Coach Wilson tries calming down him on the sidelines, but you can sense the frustration from Oaks. Fourth quarter, Spartans up by five. Cook goes up to R.J. Shelton, and Shelton uses those strong hands to bring it down. That touchdown by Cook puts him above Kirk Cousins for all-time Michigan State passing touchdowns. Spartans win at 52-26 to remain undefeated, and the Hoosiers lose their fourth straight game, dropping to 4-4 on the season. The Hoosiers continue to struggle late in ball games. Sports director Brandon Farkas has more. <laughs> Following the Hoosiers' 52-26 loss to the Michigan State Spartans this past weekend, IU quarterback Nate Sudfeld made it clear. He is tired. Tired of the word close, but that's what we are, and we just need to keep fighting. The Hoosiers were down by less than 10 points at the beginning of the fourth quarter against both number one ranked Ohio State and number seven Michigan State, but the team is still winless in conference play this season. I'm just disappointed. There's the way it looks with those two late runs and the, and the kicking blunders makes it look worse than it was because I really felt our kids battled. I'm not into moral victories, but I like the way – I think it shows we're gaining on as far as just – we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some pretty good teams. And we're kind of looking them in the eye, we're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, so not into moral victories and not trying to justify anything. We need to win, and that's what we talked about after the game. We need to learn to close close games, finish close games, close it out, and we need to win. It's frustrating to be close because – we don't do this to, to be close. We do this to win and, and win in moments like this when it's tough and grinding out. So it's, it's just disappointing and frustrating. The Hoosiers haven't scored in the final quarter in three straight games now. The team is on a bye this week and will return to action on November 7th at home against Iowa, where wide receiver Mitchell Pate said that streak needs to end. Let it get away. I mean, the score was not indicative, but I mean, we need to start winning these games. Um, just getting tired of losing those ones, that's for sure. It's time to start winning those games. and Got to find a way to do it this week. Um, by week, get ready for the next couple of opponents because we got to start winning games, that's for sure. We'll have to wait another week to see whether or not the Hoosiers can put together a full 60 minutes of good football. From East Lansing, I'm Brent Farkas, Hoosier Sports Night. Michigan State quarterback Connor Cook passed the ball at will against Indiana Secondary. Coach Kevin Wilson said the defensive backs have hit a wall. Dimitri Bubaris breaks down the secondary and some of their growing pains. 
It's expected that with inexperience comes flaw. But through eight games this season, Indiana's secondary has been plagued by inconsistency and has struggled to find its identity. I just feel like we got to step up and make our plays. Uh, it don't matter what wall they hit. It's unexcusable. We got to make the plays. And the starting secondary is young in age. Andre Brown and Jonathan Crawford are both true freshmen. Chase Dutra and Rashard Fant are redshirt sophomores that both played sparingly behind upperclassmen last season. Uh, our defensive back Andre Brown had a birthday Thursday and he turned 18. And he was, or he had seven Big Ten starts as a 17 year old. And I'm out there watching Cook and Crawford, and I said, and then Tyler Green's playing, Andre Brown's playing. I think some of those freshman guys have hit the wall with the ability to make some of those plays on the ball just with strength level and maturity. The bend but don't break mentality can only work for so long. And on Saturday, Michigan State quarterback Connor Cook exposed that theory, carving the Hoosiers' defense apart, passing for nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns. They made a couple more than we did today and pulled out the win, but they got a great quarterback, great receiver, so it's really just, you know, got to make the play next time we're in that position. The maturity of their receivers and physical strength, uh, they made a few more competitive plays. Connor puts it in a great place. His receivers have matured and have done a great, great job for him. In East Lansing, Dimitri Bubaris, Hoosier Sports Night. Assembly Hall was jam-packed on Saturday night as Hoosiers fans came out to see the men's and women's basketball teams for the first time this season. Tyler Ratz has more. Basketball is officially in the air around Bloomington as Hoosier Hysteria helped kick off the start of the men's and women's seasons. It was a night full of excitement, and if this is any indication of what's to come, it should be a great year to be an Indiana basketball fan. Nothing gets Hoosier Hysteria going quite like the team introductions, and this year, players from both the men's and women's teams had some new moves to show off for the crowd. Festivities got underway with a three-point contest, and in the overall final, it was sharpshooter Ty Rebus of the women's team against Troy Williams of the men's team. Much to the surprise of Assembly Hall, it was Williams who won this battle of the sexes and was crowned three-point champion. Looking to continue his dominance on the evening, Williams took his talents over to the dunk contest, where he blew away the competition with multiple impressive dunks that had the crowd on their feet. Once the skills challenges were over, it was time for the men's basketball team to put all of their off-season hard work to the test in a five-on-five -five scrimmage. Despite impressive play from newcomers such as Thomas Bryan and Jawan Morgan, there was one player in particular that stood out to coach Tom Crean. Yogi's got to be able to play over the tough shooting nights. He's got to be able to play over uh, the collapsing defenses or the defenses that are built on him. And he's got to be the key component of how much the ball moves. And, and then that'll make it a lot easier because there's no question he's going to be the key at the point of attack defensively. And then I think, again, we've got a lot of different things planned with him on how we'll move him around offensively. Yogi and the Hoosiers will get their season started on Tuesday when the team plays its first exhibition game against Ottawa. From Assembly Hall, I'm Tyler Ratz, Hoosier Sports Night. It was a muddy day on the pitch for the Hoosiers rugby in its last home game of the season, but the Cream and Crimson stayed focused on the task at hand an undefeated season, and an appearance in the Big Ten Championship. Here are a few highlights from the game. The Hoosiers keeping their eye on the Big Ten Championship, not letting a win over Davenport catch them overlook Michigan State. We pick up action early in the first half. Michigan State's flanker goes down with the ball. Indiana's flanker, Connor Marsh, in on the play, able to take it away. Out to Tyler Janney, out to Jonathan Inari, and eventually to the wing, Jake Hidalgo attracting the attention of four Michigan State defenders no one keeping an eye on Teddy Terrazzi running in support. Through the center of the goal post into the try zone, he touches down for the score. Conversion good. Hoosiers go up 7 to nothing. A little bit later, Michigan State on the drive again. Connor March with another takeaway. Tyler Janney scoops the ball to Tyler Graham, who gets a hard run deep into Spartan territory. Jacob Garwood gets the ball out to Bryce Campbell. It eventually makes it out on the wing to Jacob Dalgo who some way, somehow, gets it into Alex Doria's hands with the try. Hoosiers up 12 to nil. Still in the first half, Hoosiers holding fast on defense with the Spartans driving. 
Jake Hidalgo with the quick hands almost able to get the turnover, but Michigan State maintains possession. That's all they would do. The boys in green deciding to go for points, they get three, and that's all the Hoosiers allow on Saturday. The rain soon come, and it did pour on the ground and on the scoreboard. Sean Gannon easing on over the try line as the Hoosiers get the win, 64-3. to The cream and crimson is off this weekend, but travels to Wisconsin on the 7th with a chance to play in the Big Ten Championship on the line. The women's soccer team traveled to East Lansing on Sunday to try to get their first Big Ten win of the year against the Michigan State Spartans. Spartans struck first, but IU senior Jesse Bajuvis tied the game up in the 26th minute on a penalty kick. But the Hoosiers couldn't hold on as they fell to the Spartans 3-1. On Wednesday, the women fought Purdue in the battle over the Golden Boot, but the Hoosiers fell to Purdue to finish out the season. The Indiana men's soccer team is one win away from 700 victories in program history, and they have a chance to hit the mark this weekend when Wisconsin comes to town. It's the last home game of the season for the Hoosiers, who have not lost a game since an overtime thriller against Ohio State on October 10th. Since then, the Cream and Crimson have tied Maryland and beaten Louisville and Michigan. Currently, the Hoosiers are the number eight seed in the conference, and Saturday's match is against the number nine seed in the conference. The Hoosiers are looking to improve to three wins in conference and ten wins on the season. The kickoff is at seven this Saturday at Jerry Yagley Field. Not too many headliners in Big Ten football this weekend. Dimitri Gubar is joining us at the desk right now. What you got for us? Jacques, don't take these games lightly. I get it. It's the heart of the Big Ten schedule. For, for a lot of these teams, these games are the difference between making a bowl game and not making a bowl game. What was nice about this week is that a lot of these games went down to the wire. Well, Ohio State really looked like the number one team in the nation. We'll get to that in a second. But first, let's start with the day games from week eight of Big Ten football. We start things off with Wisconsin at Illinois. Pick things up early in the first. Joel Stavi drops back to pass and doesn't sense the pressure. Stavi hurt on the play. He would leave the game with a head injury. So in comes Bart Houston. Second quarter, Illini up three. And Houston, a little back shoulder action to Robert Wheelwright. And look at Wheelwright with the awareness to dive for the pylon there. Badgers up 7-3. Wisconsin leading in the third until Keyshawn Vaughn does this. 36 yards to the house makes a safety look silly there. And Illinois takes the lead. Fourth quarter, Wisconsin back on top and a chance to ice it here. Houston to Alex Erickson over the middle. That'll do it. Badgers take it 24-13. Northwestern at Nebraska. This one was back and forth all day long. Jump to the fourth, Clayton Thorson with time in the pocket. 37 yards to Dan Vitale. Wildcats up 27-22. All right, here comes Nebraska. Fourth and six, and the Huskers going for it. Tommy Armstrong looks downfield to Brandon Riley. An unbelievable catch to keep the big red alive. Huskers now inside the five, and Armstrong, he's going to take this one in all himself. Got to go for two, so the offense is going to stay out there. Armstrong with time in the pocket, looks over the middle, but it's broken up. Northwestern choose clock, and they win it 30-28. to Mike Riley can only look on from there. Another heartbreaker for the Huskers. Maryland hosting Penn State. Mike Loxley making his debut as the Terps interim head coach. Christian Hackenberg looking to set the school's all-time passing yards record, and he does just that right here. A dime to Chris Godwin. Jump to the third. Penn State trailing, but not for long. Hackenberg throws back shoulder to Deshaun Hamilton, and the Nittany Lions back on top. But this was a seesaw battle all day long. Perry Hill to DeAndre Lane for the 10-yard touchdown. How about the footwork from Lane? Early fourth, Terps up three, and nobody throws the deep ball better than Hackenberg. This one to Geno Lewis. High point the football and go up and get it for the kids at home. Hackenberg with his ninth career 300-yard passing game. Penn State's defense with five turnovers. That'll usually get you the win. It does. Nittany Lions take it 31-30. to the nation's top-ranked team in action at Rutgers. JT Barrett gets the start for the first time this season. How would he fare? Early second, Buckeyes up a touchdown. Barrett to Michael Thomas, and Thomas says, let me do the rest. 50 yards for the score later in the second, and what can't Braxton Miller do? Remember, this guy's been a quarterback his entire career. An unbelievable catch. Take a look at this one one more time, because once just doesn't do it justice. Man, is this guy an athlete. Early third, Buckeyes up 21 zip. Barrett slings it to Curtis Sandal. This offense is just rolling. Still in the third, and this time Barrett will keep it for himself. 
Places a couple defenders and scampers his way into the end zone. Barrett, five combined touchdowns. Looks like Urban Meyer is going to have to stick with number 16 from now on. Ohio State wins it big, 49-7. Well, fellas, it looks like JT Barrett is the Buckeyes quarterback moving forward. I mean, this is a guy that can make plays on the ground and through the air. And when you look at the arsenal of weapons that Ohio State has on their offense, there is no doubt about it. Ezekiel Elliott, Jalen Marshall, Michael Thomas, and of course, how can you forget about Braxton Miller? This offense clicked. We saw it on Saturday, and I think we're going to continue to see it for the rest of this season. Well, this is about as late in the season as you can decide who your starting quarterback is. I mean, week, week eight, I don't think I've ever heard of this before, but it could pay out for the Buckeyes. That's right. I mean, Urban Meyer's decision to sit Cardell Jones – Discussed a lot in the media, but going with JT Barrett seemed like his decision paid off a lot on Saturday. That's going to do it for us here on Hoosier Sports Night. Keep in mind, Indiana football is off this weekend. Indiana basketball has an exhibition game 7 o'clock Tuesday against Ottawa. And remember to follow us on Twitter at IUSTV Sports. For Jacques Rozier, Dimitri Babaris, I'm Sam Lieberman. Thank you for watching.